A NASA engineer is touting his designs for an ion engine that could reach 99% of the speed of light. I'm Eric Malachite, and today we're going to be covering what very likely could be another EM drive fiasco. NASA engineer David Burns is claiming that his proposed helical engine could reach 99% the speed of light without the need for fuel. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It should, because similar claims were made about the experimental EM drive before peer review stomped all over that pipe dream like the US economy has been doing to the American dream. Mm, I felt that one right in my wallet, and I wrote that line. But is David Burns just blowing smoke up NASA's electronic derriere? Well, not exactly. Burns's helical engine design takes advantage of a loophole in physics, specifically the principle in special relativity that particles accelerated to the speed of light will increase in mass. The helical engine is designed in such a way that it will collect quote-unquote propellant instead of expel it. That propellant would take the form of ions that are taken in by the engine and then accelerated to relativistic speeds through a closed loop. During this looping process, the velocity of those ions would be changed slightly, thereby altering their momentum. The parts inside the engine would then be moving back and forth, thereby generating thrust. Those of you who read a lot of science fiction may be familiar with the concept of spaceships collecting fuel in the midst of their journeys. To better understand the concept of taking in particles for this purpose, as well as why it's culturally significant, let's take a detour and talk about the Bassard Ramjet, the interstellar ship of yesteryear. Paul Anderson's novel, Tau Zero, introduced what's known today as the Bassard Ramjet, a fictional type of ship that collects fuel during its journey to accelerate to relativistic speeds. And then, Werner Vinge also used this concept in his Zones of Thought series, two of which I own. A Fire Upon the Deep is one of the best space opera novels you will ever read, so get your shit together and read it, people. Star Trek even uses this concept to some degree. See those red things on the front of the Enterprise and Enterprise D? Those are called Bassard Collectors, and you can probably tell what they're supposed to do based on the name alone. They obviously collect Bassards right? But the Bassard Ramjet was originally proposed in the 1960s by physicist Robert W. Bassard. His version was different in that it featured a fusion-powered rocket and massive electromagnetic fields that could range from kilometers in the double digits to thousands of kilometers. A ram scoop on the ship would have collected hydrogen from the interstellar medium and then compressed it to fuel its fusion reactor. Really, that's where the similarities between Burns' helical engine and the Bassard ramjet begins and ends. Well, other than the fact that the current proposal is as much science fiction as Bassard's is today, but will that always be the case? The problem with relying on nuclear, chemical, and electrical propulsion in regards to deep space travel is that there is a very real trade-off between getting a suitable thrust and having to store large amounts of propellant. The helical engine would change that by using a closed cycle propellant. David Burns' paper outlines a thought experiment of a box that rests on a frictionless surface. Inside that box is a heavy ring that slides on a rod anytime the box moves. The example, pictured here in figure one, imagines that anytime that box moves and the heavy ring reaches one end of the box, the resulting collision is elastic, causing the ring to bounce back and forth and generate thrust. Continuing the thought experiment, we must continue to imagine that once the ring reaches the middle of the box, its mass is halved. And once this newly modified ring reaches the other side of the box again, it's lost half its velocity. Essentially, this example is showing that the ring and box system has expelled half of its quote-unquote propellant during this exchange. However, Burns goes further and states that even if the box is traveling at 1,000 kilometers a second and the ring has a top speed of 10 meters a second inside the box, the system will accelerate because all components are moving at an initial velocity of 1,000 kilometers a second from the perspective of an external observer. Burns' engine would replace the heavy ring from this example with a particle accelerator. Helical means helix, and this is the essential motion that the ions would be guided through while operating in space. This diagram outlines where acceleration and deceleration would happen in the system. But the problem with this concept is that, well, yes, this will provide thrust. It would be about the same amount of force that it took to type the script for this video. That's not much. So when Burns says that yes, theoretically, this engine could eventually reach 99% of the speed of light, it would take a very, very, very long time for it to do so. 
Still, this proposal may work well for maintaining satellite systems in orbit around Earth without the need for fuel, at least once it's reworked into something that is not wildly inefficient. Some critics of the proposal say that the helical engine would have to be over 200 meters long just to generate the 156 megawatts of energy required to produce one newton of thrust, which is not great. But as for deep space travel, we'll have to wait and see if the system can be tested, but I'm not holding my breath. I made the mistake of getting excited for what could have happened with the EM drive, and that turned out to be a dud, so I'm not getting my hopes up just yet for this. Still, even if the experiments are a failure, this new proposal does feature some interesting ideas. So who knows, maybe it's a good stepping stone to finally figuring out how to reach the stars. If we were able to reach just 20% of the speed of light, it would be a game changer for humanity. But what do you think? Is this just another pipe dream, or do you think there is real merit to this proposal? If you dug this short science video, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz, and be sure to check out our longer videos like this one on i7. Sure to blow your mind. Be sure to join our Discord community to spark up a conversation with other astronomy and science nerds like you. And hey, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.